In this video, I want to discuss the idea of normalization. And this is really critical when we think about constructing our quantum states. And the tricky thing is that normalization is one of those things that's introduced before you see the entire mechanics of what we're doing. So I want to introduce it the way the book does, but also justify it in a different approach that might actually make more sense. So the idea of normalization is that we want our vectors, in this case our, our, our vectors are representing these quantum states, to have length 1. And the reason is that when we think about, for instance, our, our vector space that our states exist in, that the length of the vector doesn't actually have very much meaning. The direction is going to matter, and in this case it's a generalized direction, but the length itself doesn't, doesn't physically matter. And so this is one of those things that's a little bit tricky to conceptually explain, but we can think about it in terms of probability. We know that our probability needs to be a number between 0 and 1. So if we just make the, the value of this bigger, 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 then really this becomes a meaningless number. Instead, how you can think about this is like that inner product, that dot product that we expect in general if we just think about vectors in a 2D plane to be 1, 0, negative 1. Now in this case we're squaring it, which would mean it goes between 0 and 1. So this is where that idea of the inner product comes from. So when we normalize our vector, what we're saying is we want this inner product to be equal to 1. And notice in this case it's a ket with its corresponding bra state. And so that's, this is just like saying if we have some general unit vector dotted with itself, that we need that to be equal to 1. Because these in fact point in the same direction if they're a generalized unit vector, if it's a unit vector it must have a length of 1. So this works out. And now notice that all our probability calculation has done, and in general this is going to be two different states, an input state and an output state. But in general, this quantity inside would be 1, so when we magnitude square it, it's also 1. So this is like saying that if our in state and our out state, are for, to kind of colloquially refer to it, right, our measurement, if what we have, if we're sure that we have a certain quantum state and we then ask, well now if I measure it, what do I get? The answer is you have 100% probability that that's what you're going to measure. Now there's a caveat here in that eventually we're going to let our quantum states change. So when we write it this way, no change is occurring. Nothing is happening in between knowing that this is our quantum state and making the measurement. So thinking about it in terms of probability is consistent with just saying that this inner product, this bracket, has to be 1. And again, we're just saying that the length of the vector doesn't really matter. It's within this generalized spin vector space, what way does it point? So now, if we write a general state, so again, if this is a spin 1 half system, we have the um, it's spanned by these two basis vectors, so we know that we can write any state in our, in our vector space as a sum of these two with scalar complex numbers. We then have a corresponding bra state. So now let's get a constraint on A and B based on this idea. So where I'm going to say that 1 must equal this bra. So I have my complex conjugate of A with my spin up basis, and then my complex conjugate of B with my spin down basis, and that that is now inner product with a spin up plus B spin down. So now we get to FOIL, right? We're going to get four terms. And so I have my first term here, and then my second term here, third, and then fourth. And I'm doing this out explicitly because we really need to practice um, doing this sort of work. It will happen a lot in chapter one and eventually it will be very, very easy, but initially it's all we're really doing. So that first term, we get a star a, uh, and then we have plus bracket plus. Second term is a star b plus with my minus, and make sure that you're not switching the orders of the bras and cats. Later, that might matter for things. And then my third term is b star a, minus 
plus. And be careful with, with your uh, writing so that it's kind of clear what your states are. Try not to crowd things together too much. And then the fourth term is B star uh, B minus minus. So again, that inner product now here of plus with plus is equal to 1, plus with minus is 0, minus with plus is 0, minus with minus is 1. So these two terms are just going to completely drop out, and what we're left with is 1 equals a star a plus b star b. And remember that these coefficients are scalars, so we can flip the order if we want. But notice that a star a is the same as the magnitude of a squared, right? The complex conjugate times itself gives us that, plus the magnitude of b squared. And so if b itself was a, um, a number like 1 half, then the complex conjugate of 1 half is still just 1 half. But because these can be complex, it's always really helpful to, to put that star there even if you don't need it in the end. So this is actually a constraint on a and b. We can't just have a be 2 and b be 3 and have this be a meaningful quantum state. We in fact have to have this normalization. So if you see in general some sort of quantum state where in fact, and I'll just use um, different letters to make it clear that, you know, okay, we have some coefficients here. The first step is going to be normalizing this. And what you have to do is actually calculate out what this would be. And so then our properly normalized quantum state, right, this may or may not be normalized. We're going to divide out by the magnitude of these, right, in this case it's c squared plus d squared, and then we have that c, and I've run out of space on the screen, d. So make sure that you always do that normalization step first, or else none of your other calculations will exist. Again, this probability part assumes that our state is normalized, and every other calculation that we do assumes that. So this is the basic idea of normalization. We can either draw analogies with unit vectors and think about inner products, or we can think about probability. Mathematically, it's, it's closely related, um, and this will be just the first step of really every calculation you do from here on out.